Welcome to episode 183 of the Twim Show. This is Sajid, and today I'm going over the digital marketing updates from the week of October 16 through 20, 2023. And just so that you know, this is going to be a rather short episode just because nothing much has happened except for a few updates. Okay, with that, let's jump in. Microsoft has basically uh, rolled out target CPA and maximize conversions to all advertisers. Target CPA, again, is for for people who wants to set a target acquisition cost, uh, which is cost per acquisition goal, and have the system uh, try to match or do better. So, for example, you say, hey, Microsoft, I want customers to buy my, uh, let's just say, pen for $5 at $5. Uh, Microsoft is going to try to match that $5 or maybe come down to, say, $4.50. Now, that doesn't mean this is the cost of the ad, right? This is just like, you know, individual, uh, let's just say it takes uh, 10 clicks, uh, 10 visitors, then uh, one converts out of 10. So the total cost of the 10 clicks are going to come out aggregate to $5. And then of that 10 clicks, one is going to buy, and then obviously your cost per acquisition is going to be $5. So that's what's happening, number one. And number two is maximize conversions. Uh, Then again, this is where uh, the system is going to try to maximize conversions uh, for the price um, you have set, set, which would probably go into the, um, what will I say, which will go into the, uh, I'm trying to gather, collect my, collect my thoughts, uh, which would go into the uh, cost per click. Again, these are options that are already exist in Google Ads. So this is something Microsoft is adding into their platform, and that's about it. Okay, going talking about Google Ads, Google has just finished rolling out October 2023 core and spam updates. Uh, they started back on uh, 5th of October, uh, and both of them... Uh, started around the 5th of October and it was covered in the past episodes and now I'm just sharing with you that update has been done. In the the core update took about 14 days of two weeks and this is generally what it takes for Google up, uh, algorithm updates to roll out. Uh, the core update, uh, basically I'm looking at my notes, uh, it, it had a significant impact on SEOs and websites causing a low, lot of vol- volatility volatility in the search rankings. Uh, The update is global and affects all type of contents. Now, if you have noticed changes in your website performance, this could be why. However, Google hasn't impacted what percentage of queries were impacted, but it is safe to say that the reach is wide. On the other end, which is the spam update, this update started on the 4th and ended on the 20th. It targets spam techniques that violate Google's policies, particularly in languages like Turkish, Vietnamese, Indonesian, Hindi, and Chinese. So I am assuming none of my listeners or viewers have been affected just because my viewers and listeners are primarily from the US, which is English. But at the same time, that I mean, even though Google targeted particularly uh, Turkish, Vietnamese, Indonesian, Hindi, and Chinese doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to target English, right? Again, if your site was affected, uh, Google search uh, suggests reviewing your spam po- their re- spam policy. Now you might be wondering, Sajid, this is too much. Like how how the hell am I supposed to know all these things? Well, number one is if you create content for the human and not for the machine, which is the Google bot, then I think you'd be good to go in the first place. You have nothing to worry. So that's why I always believe in building the content, writing content. Uh, the proper way uh, the first time and not have to worry about it. It's like if you lie you ha- and you keep on lying to people, you will always have to keep track of what you are saying to whom and how you are saying it, right? But at the same at the same time, if you were to just being honest and direct and truthful, then you never really have to keep track of all those things. Maybe that's not a great example, but that's the only example I can think of right now uh, when it comes to algorithms and SEOs. It's just write the right proper content. And if you write proper content, eventually you are going to get, you know, you're going to surface yourself. And now I'm not saying there is no validity in writing content, like doing some analysis, say, hey, is this content going to be ranking and who's there and things like that. There is always merit to that. There is always need for that. But I'm just saying, don't write content because, oh my God, if I write this content, then I'm going to be number one. 
I mean, that's just going to be very short-lived, even if you can make it to the top. Okay, uh, moving on, YouTube has this new AI-powered uh, thing called advertising feature called Spotlight Moments, which is designed to boost your brand's visibility during key cultural events. This new feature uses artificial intelligence to place your brand's video next to the most relevant and engaging content related to specific cultural moments like Halloween or Christmas. Here, So here's how it works. YouTube uses AI to identify popular vi videos related to these cultural moments. Your ads will then be served alongside this content, giving your brand a chance to shine during these high traffic periods. All these videos will be curated into dynamically updated playlists on a sponsored hub called YouTube Culture Hub, which will also feature your brand's logo. Uh, again, this is very new. I'm not really sure how this will also play out, but it sounds like you know, it's geared towards more like brands that are spending a certain amount of dollar on a consistent basis on YouTube. Uh, again, I really, it's just hot off the presses. I'm not sure how this will all play out. I haven't seen it in action yet. So I, unfortunately, I cannot dive deeper, but I just wanted to bring it out to you that, you know, this is an option that exists in YouTube as of now. The other thing that YouTube is doing, uh, which is not really YouTube ads, but what's happening is creators can now add timestamps to tag products in their video. This new feature aims to enhance your advertising strategy by targeting potential customers at the most opportune uh, opportunistic moment, right? So when a timestamp is added to a tagged product, the shopping cart button appears at the time when your viewer engagement is expected to be high. This precision in targeting can result in increased engagement and conversions. That's what YouTube is claiming. Now, this feature is specifically uh, timely as YouTube plans to remove some ad controls controls for our newly uploaded videos next month. So what they're doing is they're re from no starting November, they're removing pre-roll, post-roll, skippable and non-skippable ads uh, moving forward and creators will only be able to decide between displaying an ads before or after a video and whether to have this option on and off. If they turn this option on, YouTube will automatically decide which ads which ad type to display as appropriate, giving creators and spawn. Uh, so that's what YouTube is deciding, right? That uh, is taking out some controls. So now instead they're putting in this thing where you are able to uh, add timestamps to your product. So when you do that, basically a shopping cart is gonna pop up and people can click on the shopping cart and buy. This is great for e-commerce platforms if they are trying to you know, showcase a live display or having asking creators to do videos and they can link into it, okay? Uh, and this is where it comes, the next feature, which is all, YouTube is also rolling out uh, to improve shopping experience. Uh, what they're doing is they're allowing creators to bulk tag affiliate products in video libraries, potentially letting them uh, earn revenues from older videos that are still, I guess, being viewed. Um, and obviously in return, you the advertiser will get uh, some money as from sales as well. Okay, and YouTube is thinking about a uh, new reporting tool in YouTube Studio that will reveal which affiliate products are generating the most revenue for brands. Uh, again, if you're a creator, this is gonna be very good because you could just decide, hey, should I work with this brand or not? Okay, talking about ads, Google Ads has a new certification policy that requires test takers to uh, take a picture of their photo ID, uh, showing their face, record their video of their, record a video of their test taking environment while they take steps. Uh, they cannot have a noisy background, they cannot have people behind the things, things like that. This is what uh, Google is pushing towards uh, and they're saying, you know, this will encourage uh, this will allow to have higher quality Google Ads certified people. Now, this is where it's going, right? Uh, and obviously Google is planning to charge uh, money for these exams starting I think next year. Um, they haven't said this, but they said it in some one of the announcements. Now this is all happening in Google Ads. If you ask me, uh, well, you know, they kind of do some of this stuff in say exams like AWS. Uh, and all those things, uh, but Google doing it and Google is saying, hey, this is gonna be a closed book exam, so you cannot have any open book, you cannot have anything else, any other things. So they're very getting, again, I know about AWS, AWS does that because AWS is very strict. Now my question is, you know, with Google, everything is getting automated, right? So are they really, I'm not sure, again, this is gonna become a money-making venture for Google, right, to kind of say, oh, if you're gonna be Google's, 
they're pushing everyone with AI driven ads, right? So what are they gonna test? And last time I checked, you know, their exam was really geared towards using Google's, uh, oh, Google has recommended this, ap apply this. I haven't taken a Google exam in the last 12 months, so I know they have released three new professional courses, uh, how good that is. But Google and AWS, there are, are Amazon AWS exams. There is like a world apart. And number two is why I still don't understand why in 2023 that we have to take closed book exams for a professional skill. Are we? Are you testing on our ability to uh, see how much we can memorize, or are we? Are you testing us to see whether we can actually solve a problem or not? Right. So what I would rather see is have us do more like project based right uh, to see if we can do it like if you are at a job right are you again i'm off to, are you really gonna if you get stuck right and you do not know the answer on top of my head is this cool is what i'm trying to say i don't believe in closed book exams uh, especially in 2023 in the world of chat gpd but you know to each his own uh, obviously i will not be taking the exam i don't plan to take the exam but you know i thought i'd bring it and share it with you Next up, uh, Google is shaking up the ad attribution stuff. They're removing four attribution model, which is first click, linear, time decay, and position based. Uh, that's because Google is saying less than 3% conversions were using this and it doesn't make any sense. So obviously there's gonna be uh, data driven. Uh, I kind of agree, but you know that first click, first click, linear, and time decay uh, were not really um, helpful. So what we were using is data driven and Google has been pushing data driven for some time. So if you may, if you see the trend where Google will first come up with this new feature called data driven attribution and then they're going to push everyone towards that and then they will say we should use it this is good and then they will say this is like the default and then then slowly they will say oh nobody was using it so we yanked it out. Right? That's how it does. It is what it is, right? You know, when we are using the platform, we are at their mercy. Uh, and Google is claiming that switching to data-driven models can result in a 6% increase in conversions. A conversion is a conversion. But, you know, hey, if you don't like it, you can always use third-party tools to track uh, attribution and which some big brands do that. Uh, if you are a small brand, I guess you are stuck with uh, whatever Google is giving you. Okay, uh, last update of the week, Google is changing how fa uh, favorite icons are being crawled. So again, what if you're not fa familiar with fa uh, favorite icons, which is Favi icon, it's a small icon that appears next to your website's name in the browser tab and search results. It's small but crucial part of your online branding. Now, previously Google had a separate user agent specifically for downloading Favi icons, uh, fav, con fav icons from websites. This user user agent has now been removed. Instead, Google has clarified that if you want your fav icon to be displayed in search results, you must allow both Google bot image and Google bot to crawl your pages. In simpler terms, you need to make sure Google's web crawlers can access your, both your website, homepage, as well as fav icon file. If either is blocked, your fav icon won't show up in Google search results. That's it. This change means that you no longer have to request indexing specifically for your Favi icon. It will automatically be crawled by Googlebot and Googlebot image. This update aims to streamline the process and make it easier for website owners, but it's essential to ensure that your website is configured correctly to take advantage of it, which is aka the robot.txt file. Okay, with that folks, that's it for this week in marketing. Uh, this is your host Sajid signing off. Until next week, take care. Bye-bye.